classical mechanics video. Uh, this is a homework problem that I, I was asked about and I'm like, wait, and then I got stuck and then I figured it out and so I'm gonna do it. And I'm actually gonna do more than the problem. So let's start off with a work energy problem and show something. So imagine that I have an object of mass m2 orbiting another object of mass m1. And so this object m1 is very, very heavy, so it doesn't move, so we don't have to worry about that. We know that the, that the gravitational force, uh, I wrote it as a vector, is negative g, the gravitational constant, the product of their mass is divided by the distance between them squared, and then that r hat, so that r hat's pointing that way, so the negative means the force is pointing that way, which we knew. Um, and then we also know the potential energy term here uh, for potential uh, gravitational potential negative g m1 m2 over r. And I derived that in a previous video, and I probably won't link it because I'll forget. I'll say, hey, I'm going to link that video, and then I don't because I forgot. So, but it's there. You can find it. Okay, so in this case, let's just find out the, let's write an expression for the energy of this object. Um, I have this moving in an orbit with that gravitational force, and it has to be equal to the mass times the acceleration. So we can just use the simple form of this. Uh, the magnitude of this is the same direction. The vector force is the same direction as the acceleration. So I can write g m1 m2 over r squared. That's the gravitational force. And that's going to be m2 v squared over r. Right? This is the mass. That's the centripetal acceleration. That has to be true. Okay. So what I want to do is to get an, exp I want to find the kinetic energy. So I can get the kinetic energy by multiplying both sides by R, and I get G M1 M2 over R, over R, right, because I have, that's going to cancel. And then I can multiply that by a half, so I have 2, and that's going to be 1 half M2 V squared. So that's my kinetic energy. That's my T, kinetic energy. What's the total energy? Well, the total energy, we can write E as T plus U, and so U is going to be equal to this. So E equals, well, I, I, I can just calculate the potential. I don't need to write that. Let's write, there's my kinetic energy term. There's my potential term. But this is also my kinetic energy. It has to be. And you'll notice this is one half of that. So here I get T over 2, no, T equals U over 2. So if I take the potential, divide by 2, I get the kinetic energy. It turns out that this is a very uh, useful relationship. It's called the virial theorem. And I think it's an important thing, uh, but I don't want to go into the full definition. In general, we say the time average value of the kinetic energy, and that's important, is equal to some constant A over 2 times the time average of potential. It's a relationship between those. And for, um, for this force, that, that term A is 1, so it's 1 half U. And uh, what this allows you to do is to take complicated systems and say, well, I don't know the motion of them, but I know something about the energy, right? I know something about the kinetic energy, the average kinetic energy, and that's what that does. Okay, so now we can do the homework problem. You can see that it works for this gravitational force. The homework problem from Taylor said the following. It said, show that if you have U equals the potential energy term K R to the N, then this works with the virial theorem. So let's take this. I'm writing really big for some reason. I don't know why I'm writing so big. I haven't done a video in a while. So let's write this in normal size. U equals, what did I just say? K, well that's a constant, R to the N, where N is an integer. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is assume that it's moving in a circle, right? If it's moving in a circle, that with that potential, I can find the force. So let's find the force from this. I can say the force is negative the partial of u with respect to r. That's the relationship between potential and force in that direction. Well, I can take the derivative of this. I don't even know the value of n, but I know the product rule. I mean, the, the power rule. So that means bring this n down front. So the force is going to be negative k n, and then decrease that by the power of 1. That's n. r to the n minus 1. So that's my force. Now, it's moving in a circle, so I know 
that the force is equal to the, the centripetal acceleration times the mass. So we don't have to worry about um, the sign anymore because I know it has to be in the same direction. K n r to the n minus 1 is m v squared over r. And again, I want to get this to look like the kinetic energy. So let's multiply both sides by r. I get k n r times r to the n minus 1 equals m v squared. Well, that r times r to the n minus 1 is r to the n. And now I can multiply both sides by a half. I get 1 half k n r to the n equals 1 half m v squared. And that is the kinetic energy, so that's the kinetic energy. Now if we look up here, you'll notice that this is going to be equal to uh, n over 2 times the potential. So I have T equals n over 2 u. And so there we have a relationship between the kinetic and the potential. And again, I used a circle so that the average is the kinetic energy, right? Because the kinetic energy is not changing, it's moving in a circle. I don't think it's the best problem. I feel like it's a little tricky, um, but I got stuck, so I thought I should solve it.